You didn't mention Ahmadinejad as one of the reasons for the lessening support of Iran. Does his presence play a role? Well, it works both ways. I mean, you know, when Iran was viewed as the, the challenge to the West, um, he was a hero. In Saudi Arabia in 2008, early 2008, before all this fell apart for Iran, we asked a top of, top of the mind question, what leader not from your own country is the one you most respect? The number one guy was uh, Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of the Shia movement Hezbollah in Lebanon. The number two was Ahmadinejad, the Shia leader of president of Iran. Number three was Bashar al-Assad, the Alawi leader from Syria. And the three of them combined had about 50%. This is top of mind. This is not like forced response. And so in decidedly Sunni Saudi Arabia, you had these three leaders. What do they have in common? They challenged the West. They defied the West. They posed a threat. They, they, they spoke to the alienated masses. And that's what they all had in common. So, um, you know, in other words, what, what made Ahmadinejad attractive in 2008, for example, is precisely what makes him so unattractive now. That's why I said it was once viewed as a source of the leadership of resistance, and today they're just a meddlesome prov provocateur. He's a, and which is why I've always said that the main problem with the way U.S. deals with Iran is, you know, we, 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 George Bush built them up. And we sometimes do the same thing, too. Oh, they're a threat. Oh, they're so big. Oh, they're... We make it out like they're Hitler. We make them out like they're Stalin and, and the Soviet Union. And what they are is a little tiny irritant that wants to have a bomb and doesn't have one. And even if they did, what are they going to do with it? Sit on it? Eat it? You know, I remember in 84 here at the Moscone Center, we had a debate at the Democratic Convention over whether or not we should forswear a first use of nuclear weapons. Oh, no, we can't not. For, Jesse Jackson said at the time, I think very smartly, there's no such thing as first use. There's no such thing as second use. There's no such thing as use. I mean, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we weren't going to use them anymore, and nobody else was. Because if Iran used it, five seconds later, they're dead. It's like walking up to George Foreman in a dark alley late at night, <laughs> and he's coming at you threatening, and you're saying, I'm going to throw the first punch. That's crazy, because he's going to get you if you do. And so a, a different approach is needed. I always thought that, that ridicule was far better. I mean, if the guy is wanting to appear as big, make him out to be little. Don't build him up, because that's exactly what he wants. Like the Farrakhan thing. You make him big, you make him a threat, you play right into the very game he wants. And we've made that mistake historically in dealing with Iran. And Ahmadinejad was perfect for that, because he knew just how to get under our skin. And what we did every time, my daughter teaches third grade troubled kids. She knows exactly what you do with a troubled kid. You either ignore them or you put them down to size. You do not play into it and make them out to be the biggest threat in the classroom. That's exactly what he wants. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine.